This video is to introduce trailing date slicers, and we created them to solve a problem that I'm going to show you right now. We're looking at a PBX file, very simple model, uh, three tables. I'll show that to you in a little bit. The, the goal is to show trending over a 24 month period, but the goal, but what we want is a, is to have a tool that opens with the current month without having to go and automate the current month. And we have a blog on that called relative month slicer that Brian Grant did. You can look at that on our blog site, but the user loved that, but then said, you know what? I want to be able to choose. I want to be able to hit may and have it go back 24 months from may. So what we created is a series of DAX measures and it's using a disconnected slicer. So the basics of disconnected slicers are you create a table, it lives in your model, it doesn't have any relationships. You then use that uh, on, as a slicer on your report. So it was showing, showing up here. This is the parameter date using a field in here, the actual relative month index. And then whatever the user chooses is somehow incorporated into a measure. And that's the measure that you end up using on the chart. Here is the model fact table, a date table, and you can see the relative month index and there's a label for that. The parameter date table is identical to the dim date table, but I really just for that, I really need the parameter relative month index. That's the reason I'm pulling it in. The measures, there are four of them. I'm going to go them one at a time, but this will introduce you to them. A month tester, the, the last month index chosen, in other words, what the user chose. Does, does this month tester fall in the window? So it, does it fall in the window of when the user wanted it versus 24 months behind? If it does, let's use it in the forecast. So let me show you how that actually shows up if you have it on a graph. So here we're looking at July. The current month uh, is zero, the relative month index, July 24th. So we're at month zero, any month behind is negative, any month forward is positive. So if we looked at September 2015, it's a minus 10 on the relative month index. Since minus 10 is between zero and minus 24, it's in that 24 month window, it shows up as true, and therefore my forecast 24 months trailing is gonna show up. Uh, it won't show up if we're any further, if any further than 24 behind or if we're in months moving forward. So what do these measures look like a little bit more carefully? This is the, the, what the user chose, and it's just pulling the relative month index from the date table. So they chose April, that's minus three, I think, and that will, we can't just take that from the column. We have to put an aggregator around it, which is why we choose max, because we can't have any naked columns. And then we need to, sort of have something that in a way is going to land in the filter context or sort of comes from the filter context to say, okay, does this guy get included? Does this month fall into my window? So we're calling it month tester. Again, we, it's, it, we want the relative month index, but this time off the date table. So it could, if you had a date table that had negative, you know, 72 months to reflect five years back, it's going to say, Go to that negative 72 months. Does it qualify? If it does, uh, then we'll include it. Again, we're using a max because we need an aggregation. Finally, once we take our month tester measure and we compare it to what they want, is it less than what they want? So is, is September, which is negative 15, less than April, which is negative 4? Yes, indeed it is. And it's also greater than... Uh, negative four minus 24. So it's fallen in the window. Since it's falling in the window, then we want to have total forecast show up and not blank. I encourage you to look at Brian's uh, blog on relative month index to get a better sense of this. And I hope this is useful. Thank you.